Okay, everybody, thank you very much for joining me. My name is Effie, and we are going to talk about how Lumigo manages its own production. By the way, originally I told uh, Ares that he only has five minutes at the beginning, and of course it wasn't five minutes, but I totally understand him, you know, when talking about Lumigo, it's very hard to talk only five minutes. So uh, before talking about how we do it, I want to tell you a little bit about our production. Okay, so some really interesting numbers. So we are actually going over 3 billion invocations of our customers once per month. We are digesting around 40 terabytes of data per month. And internally, we are using the AWS Lambda 1.6 billion invocations per month. Wrong click of a button and everything melts down. By the way, guys, that's a real sandwich that won first place last year in Dublin in a, some kind of a weird competition. And I must say it looks very tasty, but I'm sure you don't want something like that in your production. So a couple of words about me. My name is Effie, I'm VP of R&D at Lumigo, uh, an AWS Service Hero. If you have any questions specifically about this session or anything related to serverless or AWS, you are more than welcome to contact me either through my uh, email, uh, LinkedIn, or Twitter handler. Don't hesitate to ask any questions that you want. I really like to help people, and I really like to answer questions. So what are we going to talk about today? So we are going to talk about Lomigo's way of thinking, and it's very important to understand that otherwise, you won't be able to understand why we chose what we chose. Um, we're going to talk about the ninjas and the ownership model. And afterwards, we're going to talk about the tools of trade, what we are using internally in order to manage our production. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with this DevOps infinity loop. Um, every software company that wants to push something to production has this specific flow. Everything starts with the product manager, sitting with a developer, uh, thinking how to design things, then someone goes and coding, someone testing it, uh, deploying it to production, uh, monitors the production, collecting feedback from the customers or for the monitoring tools, thinking how to improve the product, and the entire infinite uh, flow continues over and over again. You know, when thinking about it, there are quite a lot of roles in this infinite loop. There are actually five roles handling this entire procedure. Think about it. We have our product manager. We have our developer and our QA engineer. We have our uh, DevOps in order to deploy to production. And we have our SRE in order to monitor the production. Think about it. First of all, that's a lot of communication. That's one thing. And there's nothing bad in a lot of communication. But I think that the biggest problem is ownership. The fact that there's no one, no single person that owns the entire process. There are actually five different roles, five different people. And I'm sure that each one is doing very, let's say, thorough work and making sure that this part is being, being done on the best side, but making sure that the entire process works as expected. No one really handles it. So in Omega, we decided to change it. So instead of having five different people, instead we're using two different people. We have the product manager, of course. It's very uh, important role in the organization. But then we have the R&D, the developer itself, that instead of just coding, is also doing the other role. So it's coding is also making sure that the code he, uh, he put outside is being tested thoroughly, either by automation or manual testing, but he's doing it on himself. He's not using a specific QA person uh, for doing it uh, uh, for him. He's deploying it to production and he monitors production. So you have a single person that owns the entire process from the part, from the moment he writes code, till the moment it's being deployed in production and it's bringing monitoring production. So that's nice. Really, that's really cool that you have a single developer that manages the life cycle 
and uh, it makes sure that the feature that it develops is actually working in production and gathers feedback on this feature. But I'm missing a very important role, and this is an holistic view on the production. I need someone to actually look at the production and tell me that everything works as expected, as a production. Welcome, the ninja. So the ninja is a real role in uh, Lumigo and Lumigo R&D. It's a weekly shift uh, done by R&D developers. Each week, the developer is being replaced by another developer. And uh, the idea is that this specific developer only concentrates on the production. It doesn't do anything that is related to the regular product flow, anything that is related to the product or regular bugs. It only handles production. So what does it mean to handle only production? So it means that he has a weekly meeting with the relevant stakeholders, making sure that they are fully aware of the various issues that production has. Is the contact person between support and the R&D. If support have any questions related to our customers, they are not going directly to R&D, they are going to the ninja, asking the question. He's very knowledgeable, he understands uh, the technology and he sends it to the internals. If he can, he answers the question, and in case he can't, he goes to the R&D and asks them directly. And the ben main benefit here is that he's fully aware and he understands who is the right person to ask. He subscribed to the production uh, a channel in Slack. Any crashes or problems in our lambdas or in other resources is getting a stack notification about it. It's not only getting a stack notification, is also the person is fixing them. So he opens bugs in uh, Jira if needed, goes to the code and fixes the problem depending on the severity. So he not only manages the issues, he's also fixing them actively. And is also getting phone calls from PagerDuty. By the way, I tried to find a, a picture of a phone, and all I found is something with the word friend. PagerDuty is not your friend, but is the one is accepting the calls in the middle of the night if there's an SLA-related issue, and is the one is actually handling it. And last but not least, everything is managed in a Jira Kanban board. So again, this board is being transformed week after week to the ninja uh, that comes afterwards and gives us the full visibility on the status of production, what kind of open issues do we have, and their severity. So it sounds good, and it's really good, but I'll be honest with you, it doesn't scale well. So first of all, good news. Lumigo is growing, and originally when we started with the ninja idea, it worked really, really well when everything where everybody, all the R&D, were knew and understood how the production works, understood the, inter the internals. New developers are arriving to the company, and the, our product is complicated. Behind the scenes, things are complicated, and that's life. And um, it's very hard for new developers to gasp and understand what's the best way to solve an issue. So right now, we are trying to figure out, we still don't know how to do it, how to scale the ninja to mini ninjas. So having a lot of small ninjas in the different team, handling the specific areas, the specific knowledge, this is still in progress. And you know, as Erez said earlier, in the next meetup that we'll have, I'll be more than happy to share with you how we manage to solve the issue. So a couple of words are our tools of trade. So we are using Lumigo as our, our orchestration tool. We're really eating our own dog food, by the way. So we are 100% serverless behind the scenes. So we are using Lumigo to also monitor our own production. So Lumigo is connected to our page duty. So any SLA related issues, uh, uh, they are being uh, uh, reported to page duty and a call is being made to the specific ninja. Any issues in the lambdas, uh, crashes or problems are being reported to the Slack channel. And we have tight integration with Jira, so it's very easy from your Slack notification to open a ticket, if you decide to actually you want to use it, really the Slack notification contains all, around, all the relevant details that help our ninjas to understand what, what is the issue and how to solve it. One last thing before I finish, um, regarding critical flows. We have some 
business critical flows that let's say just by looking at on regular resources won't help. So just looking at a specific queue, checking if it's full or empty or looking at a specific table, if it contains a certain value is not enough. It's a full flow that we need to check repeatedly um, uh, every time. So we've created uh, specific flows using step functions in AWS that actually check really important business flows. So things like alerting the alerting system, logging and sign up. So things like that are actually being monitored by a specific step function in our backend. And in case uh, these flows uh, doesn't work as expected, again, the ninja itself gets a, a, a call to uh, a page agent. So that's it, guys. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions here, either for, from here or from the audience, you're more than welcome to ask me. Otherwise, we'll continue with our next session.